for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is for the players, the pop culture as PlayStation podcast. With over 40 years of playing PlayStation and six plus years in that games media combined. I want to thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Spotify and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you'd like to be part of future conversations, check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, Twitter, all our links in the description below. I'm just pointing at our Twitter handles. If you want to, you if you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash the pop cultures where you can watch us record this show live. You can join join the chat, become part of the show. If you want to support the shows in other ways, you can. You can tell your friends, you can tell your family about this PlayStation pod. If you're listening to us on podcast services like Apple Podcasts or uh, Spotify, be sure to leave us a five-star rating and a written review. If you're watching us on the YouTube, be sure to give us a like, a subscribe, leave a comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. If you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash thepopculturist, as well as our merchandise store, popculturist.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit without logos on it. Now, I'm uh, I'm also informed, as per my emails, that the store is currently on a 35% discount. So, I asked the question, have you considered buying Popsy merch before? No? I didn't think so. But now it's slightly cheaper. <laughs> As your camera freezes. <clears throat> oh, it did actually freeze. I was hold- I was yeah. actually holding it in place, and then it then it actually genuinely <laughs> freezed. So solid working, solid, solid working, solid but work. Yeah, how are you, man? Well, over the last two days, we've gotten our first taste of summer, and I don't like it. Mm. <laughs> it's hot and gross. <laughs> <laughs> I went to, on, at, a- at, at, at work Friday morning, it was 33 degrees in the office and I had to wear a mask and it sucked. It's the first time I've really complained about having to wear a mask so far. Yeah. And like, I was getting all hot and sweaty under my, oh, mm. gross, gross. I hate summer. I'll say it. I hate summer. I, look, as, it- as, someone, as someone who gets sunburned at nighttime from the moon, summer's just the worst for me. So like. <laughs> See, this is the thing. So like, I normally hate summer right because i've always been a big fucking fat dude and that means getting sweaty that means crevices and just that gross feeling of being a fat sweaty dude in the summer now that i'm heading into summer thinner and healthier and presumably less sweaty like i'm feeling pretty positive about going uh going into the summer like today so today is a lovely day this is the saturday that we're recording lovely day here in geelong it's like 28 degrees so uh, my wife, uh, my son, and my mother-in-law, we all went to the beach. Um, not the same beach in St. Kilda where everyone was being gross. We sat like, we literally were on the beach as far away from everyone as possible. A, because I didn't want to. And two, you know, just because it seemed like the right thing to do. But it was nice. Like, I, like I've got like that kind of, you know, sore skin from being in the sun, which is kind of like, not sunburny, but just like, oh, yeah, I've got some vitamins um yeah and then we and then we went up to uh the 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 chocolatiery the chocolatiery like the fucking chocolate factory that's up the road on the great ocean road uh i had a nice salad for lunch a, a wife and child had some chips and then i totally wrecked that salad with some fucking ice cream so um <laughs> it was a lovely day out and it was one of those things it's like you just sort of forget about those things and when we haven't done them in so long it was really quite like nice and refreshing and comforting be able to go out with my family and you know get some sun and do some things and i know oh i also old man pretty hard i was like i need to get some new new thongs so i went to like the surf shops in torquay mm. and they had all these lovely like you know traditional thongs and then i found these thongs that i like got like built-in arch support i'm like ooh. <laughs> So I've come to learn that I am, oh, I was aware that I was pretty much a big old man, but I'm now even more of an old man because I've intentionally bought arch supported thongs. Well done. I know. I'm so proud. My thirties, man. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping, I'm keeping better care of myself in my thirties than I did in my twenties. Got to support that arch. I was so, I was so scared to go into my thirties. <coughs> anything, my thirties are going way, way better. What have you been up to this week, my friend? What have you been playing? 
Uh, what have I been playing? So this week I've been playing a lot more Mafia. Mm. Uh, really, really been enjoying that. Yeah, I've been so playing... we did we did start jumping on that last week. That's with uh, the Mafia, the definitive edition. Uh, that code was mm. kindly provided to us by 2K Australia. Um, so, Mac, you had barely touched it last week. Where, how's yeah, so I had <clears throat> played the first two or three chapters last week. I think this week I'm sitting at chapter 15 or 16. Mm-hmm. I think there's 20 in total, so i almost there. Uh, man, this game is good. Rune, isn't it? Um, I want to point out a scene in particular. So there's a, there's a moment quite early on in the game where you fill in as a race car driver. Mm. And it, this really highlighted how terrible I am at driving in any form of gameplay whatsoever. But uh, after this scene, you, you take one of your compatriots, uh, Paulie, back to his house. He's quite intoxicated. During the Can't Prohibition, dr- might I add? Yeah, during the Prohibition. So you, you drive him home and... Um, you know, they're chatting away to each other. And I actually noticed once I pulled up, uh, despite the fact that when you're driving, you very rarely look into the car at the character models themselves when you're driving, because obviously you're focusing on the road. They're all completely... Uh, and they're, they're, their faces are all completely animated while they're talking this 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 whole scene. And I just thought that was such a brilliant thing to, to, to notice because you wouldn't, you wouldn't normally notice it because you don't, you know, you don't zoom into the car when you're driving. And I just... I thought it was brilliant that they they went to the the effort to uh, actually do that when it probably wasn't needed because you unless you really specifically looked for it you you wouldn't notice it. Yeah, and no, I I am genuinely in- impressed with Mafia Definitive Edition. So uh, for those that that may be new new to the new to the show or whatever, like previously we we reviewed the Mafia Two Definitive Edition, which was a remaster compared to this one being a remake. Mafia Two sucked, sucked ass, it sucked so bad. Um, like it did not look good. It didn't play well. Even the story was subpar. Everything here is fantastic in Mafia One. Like the story feels great and and pulls you forward. And a uh, big thank you to Uber Timmy and the fo- for the follow there. That's right. If you, as we said, we do record this live on Twitch. So come join, be part of the chat. It's it's absolutely fun. Um, yeah. So the game, the, the story is fantastic. So rather than that open world spread that we saw in mafia two, which felt like a lot of nothing. Cause he was kind of the city really wasn't quite enticing enough. You just, you just like mm. fill the time between missions. They've removed that. So there wasn't available in the first one. So it's just very linear structured mission. It's mission, 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 mission. So it forces you, it, it forces a, a, a stronger narrative and a more character driven narrative so like there are moments of exposition but those expositions are delivered uh in, a, in what i believe to be quite a smart way and it's it's not just like a name dialogue as you drive around the city it's like it's it's poignant and it's and it's intentional and then you start to see the relationship between these characters just grow like you know with you with you yourself and uh, to, uh sam and paulie you know you sort of these characters seem kind of obnoxious when you first meet them but you start to learn a lot more about them as you as you sort of head on further into the game um now where i'm up to as well you start to realize that there's a mole within the family and then there's that whole extra level of like uh, uh distrust so you get to the, like, everyone's characters kind of switch a little bit as they start to get antsy about uh knowing who this mole is and going down that path the game's fantastic i and uh, and I, as i said last week lighting lighting is amazing lighting will change how you perceive a game lighting is what makes a game realistic that's why i'm so excited for ray tracing because it's just gonna make <laughs> Like you can have the highest resolution you want, the best frame rate, but if the lighting's ass, it doesn't look real. Yeah, I think the dev team has done an absolutely fantastic job of yeah, this. Shout remake. out to Hangar Fifteen. <clears throat> yeah, amazing. Uh, other than that, I obviously uh, we we were playing. We've been playing Crash since yesterday. Yeah, so, so big so thank th- you to Activision Australia for providing uh, the code for us to play. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so, been Crash Bandicoot Four. It's about time. <laughs> I'm just doing the quick rundown. Uh, yep. This is the technical sequel to the Naughty Dog trilogy. Uh, it's kind of poo-pooing everything that came from the PS2 onwards. Uh, and it's, yeah, essentially reshuffling that and re sending Crash Bandicoot in a different a different direction. It, it's it's getting back on that numbered sequel as opposed to all the spin-off games. Yeah, Wrath of Cortex, Cortex and Titans and other mumbo-jumbo. <clears throat> yeah. 
So I I haven't played too much. I play I've played the first four levels twice because I played the first, <laughs> played them the first time with my wife, mm-hmm. uh, and then she got to a point where she's like, I I'm getting stuck. I'm getting frustrated. Can you take over? And then um, I started again on my own to not progress too far on hers. Mm-hmm. Man, this game is fantastic. Right. It's it has the feeling of the old Crash, but it's not the old Crash. I don't, I don't know how better to, to word that. Like, it's... it's. I'm not liking it from nostalgia. It's, it's, it's just... It's reminding me to a degree of the old Crash, but it has enough differences that it, it's its own thing. Because yeah. obviously it's not, it's not the Naughty Dog trilogy. Uh, these are the... Uh, guys from toys, toys for Bob. Toy, toys for Bob. So they're the same team Bob. that worked on the Insane trilogy a couple of years ago. Yeah. So it's it's in good hands. I mean, no, the Insane trilogy was absolutely amazing. So to sort of have them come across here, you know, you're getting that right, like that right direction. And as you said, like it feels like Crash. It looks like Crash, but a little bit different. Like they've slightly mm. twinged the art style a little bit. It's bright. It's colorful. You know, I'm playing on a PS4 Pro, so it runs at like what feels like a smooth 60 or at least a higher frame rate, certainly over 30. Like it's sharp. It's colorful. Like HDR is doing its thing. It's looking awesome. I'm really, really enjoying it. And it sounds like Crash Bandicoot as well. They've bought everything, you know, in terms of that that uh, sort of Polynesian with a didgeridoo sort of sound from, from the, the Insane <laughs> Trilogy. So you get that, like, that's where the nostalgia kicks in. The music is there. But as you said, like, the, 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 the frame of it, the skeleton of it is Crash. So and when they've added these new additions to kind of change it up, so... Uh, the big thing here is you're collecting masks. So previously it was gems and crystals and that sort of thing. But here you have uh, a family of masks outside of Aku Aku and Uka Uka. And they all, ha- they all have uh, varying uh, uh, effects on the world. So the first one you meet is Loki Loli, I believe. And uh, they have the ability to phase matter in and out. Mm. So that creates another little bit of, uh, bit of change to the game. So although it still feels like Crash... You got these new, new little mechanics, new little uh, gimmicks. I mean, there things, are there but- are still ge- there are still gems in each level. So there's uh, each level has a uh, you know your standard. Did you break all the boxes? Uh, because of the new mode of the game where there's infinite lives and it just gives you a death counter, there is a, did you complete the level with fewer than X amount of deaths? Mm. You'll get a crystal for that. There seems to be a hidden crystal in each, each in each level to be found. Uh, and then uh, there's a few other ones that um, will show up if it if it if the level has a death run or if it has a, a hidden area yeah. you can you can get to. Well, yeah. So we'll talk about uh, that, and then we'll come we'll come back to the mass mm. stuff. So yeah, that's that's really handy. So there's two different play game types. There is uh, what they're referred to as retro, which is what you know. It's you have a finite number of lives, and if you if you die enough, you send back to like the start of the level. You know, there's none of that checkpointing. It's you know every every 100 wampa fruits you get a life and da, 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 da. um and then there's the modern one the modern one has some slight variances as as max said you do have uh, essentially unlimited lives but there is that death counter so that way you know you're not it's more friendly for a younger audience um like i think my son will probably give that a bell uh and then also when you jump it leaves a little circle imprint so you know where you're going to land that is not in the retro because the retro is intentionally designed to be harder. Uh, mm. What are you playing on? Uh, well, I started playing on modern because that's what my wife chose. Mm-hmm. I'm playing on retro. Oh, you suck for punishment. Uh, I just, I feel that if I wasn't playing retro be- because there's no punishment for death, I would be more loosey goosey in my speed running tactics i find myself uh spin sliding constantly to get through levels faster Mm. and because there's no real i don't want to use the term punishment but because there's no real downside to dying in the modern version i feel that i'm a lot less i'm a a bit more lackadaisical about my approach to the levels actually you're kind of spot on and like i was about to touch upon that but that's the big thing that i'm experiencing right now is because i'm playing the modern mode i'm just like oh i wonder how i can get to that box so i'll just trial and error it so Mm. knowing that i'm just going to come back to that last checkpoint i'm just like i don't worry about it well, see, the issue with me is I'm very much like to collect all the boxes my first way through. I hate having to replay the level. So if I miss a box, I will intentionally jump off the map and die 
despite the fact that I have a, a finite amount of lives in retro mode. So there's been a few times where I have game over already, wow, purely because I've missed boxes. See, I'm having the so same I, approach. So realistically, well. I probably should play on modern mode, but I've got that mindset of I don't think I would take it as seriously as I am if I if I didn't have that uh, repercussion for constantly dying. Saying that, and I mean, though, starting the can... level over again is not really that big of an issue. Yeah, saying that though, you can swap it over at any point. So if you do, if you want to jump back to modern for a little bit, go to retro for a little bit. I don't believe there's any trophies or anything attached to it, so that may be the case. But I, I don't, I don't see that being being a problem. Um, yeah. Additionally, as you were saying, Max, there are different collectibles within the level. One of them being flashback tapes, which are uh, uh, VHS tapes from the '90s, where you go and you see Coco and Crash in their original experiments under Neo Cortex in the Cortex's lab, um, where you the whole point of it is to time box jumps. So rather than traversing a level like you would in the usual game, it's more like you get from A to B, break all the boxes, but it's all like those jumping sort of timing puzzles it's like crash parkour and they mm. are awesome and very frustrating <laughs> uh, and then on top of that they have torna as well so torna was the girlfriend in uh the first crash who did do a whole bunch of nothing but uh, wasn't she the wasn't she the bandicoot at the end of the uh the the bonus levels and the yeah pretty much yeah yeah yeah, so uh, now she is from a different universe with the whole idea that times and is all kind of jacked up. So she's in a she's from, uh, torn from a different universe. She's cool. She runs solo, and you sort of get to play a series of uh, missions uh, as her. And I love the way she plays, man. I think she's fantastic. She has this like grappling hook. I don't know for many people, a grappling hook is enough to like seal a deal anyway. Like mm. you get does the game have a grapple hook? Yep big tick um yeah so the way she traverses the game is very different to crash and coco so there are in terms of the some extra challenges within within the levels that are hers so with that hook shot there are different ways to traverse through the level uh there are boxes that can only be only be collected by the hook shot so you have to sort of rather than tunnel vision yourself through the level you do have to take more awareness of your surroundings if you want to collect the box gem. Yeah. And then obviously the skins are also tied to co the collection of the gems in a level. So once you collect all, I think there's six in each level. Once you collect the six uh, gems, you will unlock the skin for that uh, that comes with that level. Yeah, so that's probably one of the other big additions that are, that's in this game compared to the previous Crash Bandicoot games, or at least the Insane Trilogy, is the addition of skins. Um, now, I'm unable to find any microtransaction store yet. Um, however, we know with Crash Team Racing, give it two weeks, it's probably going to be in there. Um, it's, you know, Crash Team Racing, they, with Activision, they did that dirty tactic where they launched it without one threw it in a little bit later so after everyone had praised it for not having microtransaction they then stuck their way in but yeah what i find interesting is well it's not a cumulative total as well you have to get six gems on that one level to yeah. unlock it it's not as if you can get three here two there another one over there like you have to get it in each level which i think for many might be uh, uh, a bit more difficult because they have to like, grind a particular level to get the gems, uh, if, if especially with a level that they may not be enjoying as much. But for the completionist, um, it's certainly uh, it's the it's the incentive to, it's the incentive to replay the level. Yeah, if you didn't get it the first time. And then on top of that, although you know, as you saw, I believe once you finish your run, you'll unlock different ways to play through those levels where you'll get like you know uh, uh, the time trial time version trials, of and then there's different yeah. uh, themed levels as well. So. You can make it like retro or underwater, you know, to slow you down and sort of make it a bit more of a harder challenge. Um, you know, I'm really, really enjoying it. I suck at it still. It's it's very similar to Tony Hawk's. Activision, is, if anything, this year has taught me that I am not as good as I once remembered in many of the, my classic childhood games. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty good at Crash Bandicoot. No, I ain't. Oh, I was pretty good at Tony Hawk. No, I wasn't. <clears throat> I've been lying to myself this whole time, Max lying to myself that's all right we all have yeah but yeah so uh we'll be talking about that more as we progress through because these are our first impressions we've only been, we've only had the game for the better part of 24 hours um we will touch upon it next week because i'm i'm probably planning to, to kick more of its face in as much as i possibly can um 
Another game that I have been trying to kick its face in ahead of uh, ahead of a particular date is Marvel's Spider Man. So I uh, have returned to the DLC. I did that on th on the stream with Thursday. I was able to clear the second DLC, which is Turf Wars. Uh, and I've now made my way onto the third one, the third and final. So I will have that done and ready to go ahead of uh, Miles Morales. That's my big plan. So my big my. What? Uh, from a couple of weeks, for a couple of months ago, I made the shortlist. I was like, I'm going to finish Ratchet and Clank, which I've done. I'm going to finish the Spider-Man DLC, which I've done, and I'm going to go run uh, Resident Evil Seven again. So I've, I'm I'm two out of three down for uh, for my end year plans. Have you finished all four DLCs for Spider-Man? Um, no, there's three. Isn't three? there three? Well, there's three. So, I don't know. Yeah, so there's, it's uh, there's the there's the Black Cat, there's the Turf War, and then there's the Silver Sable. Yeah. And Puck confirms in the chat. Puck, our resident fact three. checker, comes in with the answer being three. What did you think of Turf Wars? I found Turf Wars to be quite frustrating. The I story really itself it. was the the story itself was fine. Like it wasn't fantastic. It was fine, but I found it because because of the the nature of the Turf Wars. Man, there were so many of those big brawny guys that just take forever to just, yeah. The big guys, the big like, miniguns. I'm just like there's just so off. many of them everywhere. Yeah, so. where where are they finding all these big dudes? <laughs> yeah, these big tanky dudes that carry miniguns, and then the ones with the whips. I'm like, can they just fu all fuck off? I have, I have no time for them, and they're annoying me. You're like, I'm trying. I've got a deadline here, ladies and gentlemen. I, I I get away from me. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's fine, and it's also adding a bit more. I I, I presume that in this third one, oh. What's going on? Oh, I bumped a, I bumped the Netflix button on my remote. Now it suddenly changed the TV to Netflix. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there's a lot more Peter Parker involved in this. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. not Peter Parker. It makes fucking total sense. Miles Morales in this, which yeah. leads me to believe that there's a lot of things within this DLC, probably the, the especially this third part that will transition into the into the, uh, the Miles Morales DLC. So I'm hoping to get me a bit more background because they talk about how Peter Parker is essentially training him up, getting him ready to go to uh, make his way into becoming Spider-Man. So that's pretty exciting to me personally. Um, other than that, I don't think I've been playing anything else. Uh, I, uh, uh, on oh, just a side note, cause I'm excited about it. I, uh, I received an email for cook, serve, delicious three. Mm. It's a <laughs> cooking game that I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a big hard on for. Um, it's just unnecessarily hard and it's like stupid and I love it. And uh, yeah, the third one was announced at the start of the year and it's taken so long to get to PlayStation, but it's coming this month. And when they emailed me, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Very quick response. Um, I don't think there's anything else I played this week. I think that was about it. What about you? Is there, we yeah, no, to, yeah, I think I've I think I've pointed out everything I played. Sounds good. Well, speaking of Spider Man though, let's get into the news because something happened to Spider Man this week. This section is called Inform the Place. We tell you about what happened this week in PlayStation. Max. So this is this is a story I've titled Facelift. Uh so Marvel's Spider Man PS5 remaster is back in the news once again this time with a facelift. Peter Parker has undergone some surgery during the game's remaster and has come out looking just a little different than we all remember. And the internet, as it does, has had a lot to say about it. Some love it, some hate it, and there are those of us who just don't think it's a big deal. <laughs> British model Ben Jordan is the new face of Peter Parker. Writing on his Instagram, he's, quote, excited to be part of the Marvel family as Spider-Man in the Marvel Spider-Man remastered for PS5. Uh, Brian Inahar, creative, creative director at Insomniac Games, also took to Twitter to release a statement. Today's news about the new Peter Parker face model has surprised some of you, and we at Insomniac totally understand your reaction. Heck, it even took me a while to get used to Peter's new look, but as we discussed the franchise's future and moving to the PS5, it quickly became apparent that delivering even more believable looking character made finding a better facial match for the actor Yuri Lowenthal, who we all love as Peter, a necessity. We care as much about this character as your attachment to him, so please know we didn't make this decision or change lightly. As we did throughout the development of Marvel Spider-Man, we will continue to read your comments, listen, and always be looking for ways to improve every facet of the game. At the same time, I hope you can trust us that this decision is what we feel is best for the future of the franchise and our upcoming goals for the beloved Marvel character. Uh, Yuri also took to Twitter saying, Guys, it's my face's fault. My stupid bones in my face. Blame my bones. <laughs> Damn you bones. So, it's an interesting... I have no problem with it. 
I, if it makes Peter look a little bit younger than what he's kind of envisioned and portrayed in the game, I think that's my only critique for it. Uh, but it's, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Mm. Personally, I don't know about you. I don't think it's, you know, I don't think we should get our pitchforks and torches out and, you know. Uh, before I jump into my thoughts, I'll speak sh- big shout out to Adam Frost 35 for follow there. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the show. Uh, I'm in a, I'm in a weird space with it, Max. So uh, it caught me off guard for one. Um, the thing that I'm probably most uncomfortable about it is that it looks like Tom Holland. But it's not. But it's not. Like that's yeah. the thing that makes me uncomfortable. Like there is that there is that uncanny valley. Yeah. So my understanding this this doesn't exist within the Marvel the MCU. It's like it's intentionally supposed to be disconnected, right? So why make him look like Tom Holland? Like granted, he like uh, the old model. Like he does look way older than uh, than what he was aged at. You know, but he also didn't look like con- what your conventional Peter Parker would. Uh, you know, you, you, having read comics and having watched cartoons and they all kind of stick to a very similar face and it kind of looks like Tom Holland, I guess. But uh, yeah, he, I, I enjoyed the old face, but you spend so much of the game with the mask on, who fucking cares? Yeah. The only, like, the only logical explanation that I can think of here, and now I don't think this has actually been addressed anywhere, so this could be pure speculation, is that... They, Peter Parker is obviously going to be involved in Miles Morales. He, they're obviously going to make a sequel in the future. The only, the only assumption here is the original mocap guy or the original face model said that he didn't want to do Miles or said that he didn't want to do the sequel. And they've gone, well, for continuity, we need the same face. Now, normally, they don't have the luxury of refacing someone within a game or within a film or something. Like, if you look back at the, incre- the, you know, the Incredible Hulk, where it's Edward Norton, and then suddenly it becomes Mark Ruffalo at some point, and you're like, that's a whole... Ga- you know, gamma radiation does a whole lot to you, apparently. But here, they've been given an opportunity in this remaster to switch the face and be like, we're going to keep that continuity on the PS5 for the DLC, for Miles Morales, and presumably Spider-Man 2. And that I can't argue with. Like, I imagine as, we, as we're as we in a world where you can change your face on an app to put yourself in anything, it wouldn't surprise me if we see this happening more in movies as well. But uh, I understand why those that are hurt, but also, who cares? It's not really a problem. No, no one, no one is sitting there with posters on their wall of big bushy eyebrowed Spider-Man being like, oh, he's my favorite <laughs> Spider-Man. Doesn't happen. No one is going to do that. I guarantee he is not in the top like fucking three, top five of any one Spider-Mans. I think there's only ever been five of them and he didn't even make the top five. Yeah. You know I mean? <clears throat> so there's that. Yeah. But, so speaking, uh, oh, oh, on top of that, though, they announced that the Amazing Spider-Man suit's coming, uh, they, which is, is awesome because... Well, since you since you brought up the Amazing Spider-Man, did you see that uh, Jamie Foxx is reprising his role as Electro for a Tom Holland Spider-Man film? Ah! Why? <laughs> wasn't, even that, wasn't that good the first time? Unless they, hopefully they, like, re- redo it, but maybe they had bigger plans. Maybe, ma- oh, shit. Maybe Jamie Foxx signed a three-movie a three movie contract to play Electro. Or like a two movie contract to play Electro, and because the th- Amazing Spider Man three got canned, he's like, "Well, you guys still owe me a movie." He's like, uh, "Maybe." F- fuck. All right, we'll bring you into this one. <laughs> like, either they, either they pay him out or they put him in a movie. And I imagine in that contract, that payout might be quite substantial if they then <laughs> made him be Electro again. Yeah. So speaking more on the PlayStation Five remaster, uh, this has been in development for the last year. Uh, there, uh, it's now sporting some ray tracing and tons of new bells and whistles, including a 60 FPS mode. Hot. This, this remaster is looking great. So core technology director, Mike Fitzgerald also added that while the new ray tracing reflections look good in screenshots, they really come alive in motion. Quote, seeing the cars and people come in and out of frame, pigeons and airplanes fly by, the motion in the dynamic clouds is where the remaster really shines, mm. stressing that the fidelity has improved quite a bit since the images were captured. 
Yeah, so a bunch of screenshots came out this week. Obviously, one of them being of the Amazing Spider-Man suit, which the you know the point I was trying to make before was that Andrew Garfield's actually really good Spider-Man. For those that poo-pooed him, shut your face. Um, the suit looks great, but like the the minor details that 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 aren't actually that minor, you wouldn't even really notice them unless you're p- paying attention. Is there's a shot of Spider-Man doing Spider-Maning on a wall, and it's like a glass window of uh, of a skyscraper. Um, in the original version, he was just there, and there was kind of this muddied look in the in the mirror, right? Because they didn't really allow for you know reflections, because it's very demanding. In the PS5 version, you see a perfectly reflected Spider-Man. It's vibrant. It's colorful. It looks fantastic. I was I was originally like. I'm not going to get this remaster. Why would I want to play this game again? I've got the platinum. I've now, you know, I'm about to hundred percent all three DLCs. Why would I want to play it again? I'm going to want to play it again. <laughs> yeah. I'm the same. I'm in the same boat. I think. Mm. So how, how are you, like, from, how's, what's your I, thoughts on this, all this remaster <clears throat> game that's come out? I don't mind remastering it. I think it's odd that they've, that they're dividing though it, it all comes back to this ridiculousness of what's getting free upgrades what's not how to how to get it how to not get it it's very frustrating mm-hmm. uh i wish it wasn't kind of tied to the i wish i wish it was its own standalone thing that i could purchase um i understand why they are bundling it with miles morales be miles morales being a smaller um what's the what expansion. i'm looking at smaller smaller expansion yes uh so I understand why they've done it. Uh, I can understand people's frustrations as to why it is frustrating to them that they can't just be like, I own it on PS4. Why can't I get it on PS5 without having to buy the Miles Morales Ultimate Edition? Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to matter. I think a lot of people are going to buy the Ultimate Edition. I personally will probably buy them because I would like to re-experience the game. It's a really good excuse for me to go back to it uh, since I've been meaning to anyway. And on uh, top of that, uh, we are doing a, a collaboration with another PlayStation podcast called Operation PlayStation. Max and I will be joining Dash and Paul to uh, have a such a retro retrospective look at Spider-Man and then th- through the old game, through the remaster... And then into Miles Morales as well. So we're doing combining efforts as we head into PS5. So that's coming uh, later this month, if not early next month. It's four Sounds good. Yeah, it's all right. It, like I said, I've been looking for an excuse to do it. I went back and did all the DLCs. And it was one of the games where I went, I think I might try and platinum this. And then I kind of fell off it. And a lot of other things came along that I, I've been playing. So it's yeah, a really good reason to go back to it. It is a relatively easy platinum. It, there is like you can get a like a lot of the collectibles you can get as you're playing through the story mm. the only thing you really i needed to do at the back end was sort of clear up the districts and do all the, like the uh i think that's pretty much all i've got left to area. do is to yeah yeah and then take some like photos and stuff and that, that's pretty easy to chew through because you can because the region the districts are very clearly regioned off it's like here's this line here's that line you can be like oh i'm just gonna piss fart around in here for a little while oh that's done boom well, and you can really easily circle circle your way around the map, which I really, really like. Um, the only thing that I am not going to do, because I won't, I won't be able to get 100% trophies on this game, and that is because you get, there is a trophy for New Game Plus and a trophy for New Game Plus on Ultimate Difficulty, whatever. And I am not doing it on New Game Plus, especially now that the remaster is coming. I considered it in the past, but I was like, I'm just gonna. I 100 of the game. I 100 of the DLCs. I'm not gonna do new game plus. I'm not gonna have the remaster, which is a bit of a bit of a bummer. But I don't. I don't normally trophy hunt, so it's, it's a it's a win win. Hmm. Then you have more Spider Man news, Max. No, that's that's it for spoods. <sighs> you told me that there that was so it. much spoods. I I mean, to be fair, it's half a page of spoods. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> Well, let's keep it going with some PS5 news. Uh, now, of course, we still don't know too much about the new features coming to the PS5, but thanks to some code wizards, they have managed to extract some new information. Uh, new code has been uncovered on the web-based version of the PSN uh, t- uh, with teasers of some of the new features that we might see at launch. Firstly, it looks like wishlists will finally be integrated into the console, as there is a line of code that states your wishlist isn't available on this website. You can find it on your PS5. 
Now, that's one thing that's been gone for the longest time because you go to the website, there is a wish list, but it does not translate to your, your console. So say you have a bunch of games on your wish list on your computer, you're not going to be notified on your console if they're on sale, which is, I don't know about you, the entire purpose of a wish list. Uh, in addition, it looks like you'll also be able to create parties with up to a hundred people. Cause that's disgusting and share music playlists with your friends. There's also a reference to something called a takedown. However, there is no idea what that in fact could be. Additionally, it looks like backwards compatibility, backwards compatible titles that do support PS5's boost mode feature will be marked as such. While there be a warning for 1% of PS4 games that aren't playable on the next gen console, according to, you know, 99 out of 100 of them working. Uh, interestingly, there's also reference to a page on the official PlayStation website fully detailing backwards compatibility. However, it is currently offline. Speculation has hit the Apple TV Plus. Sorry, speculation has hit the Apple TV Plus. Will also be heading to PS4 and PS5, uh, as Apple is in con in contact with Sony about bringing its service to the systems. Now, Max, these potential little uh, sneaky bits of information around the PS5. Does it tickle your fancy? Uh, having wish lists finally work on console is fantastic. Uh, do I want a hundred people in my party? No. I don't want two people in my party. Do I want people to share their music with me? Not really, but it's cool. Um, I really want to know what a takedown is. That sounds interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, I. It's a button. I mean, they all... DDoS. You, you, you're someone you don't like in the party. <laughs> they all make sense. Uh, I'm glad that they've stated that uh, backwards compatible titles that support boost mode will have a little boost mode enabled sticker mm. on it so you know um what's gonna what's gonna play well and what's not see that, really that that is a big thing so right now the ps4 does have a boost mode if you're running on the ps4 pro with the idea that being if there's any games that could benefit from that bit of oomph uh it is supported however there is no indication anywhere no information mm. anywhere that says that it's going to either hinder or improve the game it's you just have it ticked and maybe it'll work that's how I'm seeing it so far. Yeah. But yeah, uh, as you mentioned, I don't, wish don't really care for Apple TV. No. Well, the only thing on Apple TV that I would care about is Mythic Quest, which is the series, which is a series with Rob, Rob McElhenney from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. But yeah. I don't have Apple Plus. I found it by the ways. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I don't just, I don't need an, I don't need another subscription based service in my life. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't need more dollar reduced spend on services, but yeah, wish list is cool. I, I like that idea. It, it's baffling that it's been there for a while. That, that one is more of a, uh, a, a quality of life improvement that may mm. not benefit everyone, but for some it could be, it, it's going to completely alter how they play on their console. Um, hunt. Yeah. As a hunt, a hundred people in a, in a voice chat or a party. Ew. Like you and I yeah, have sounds, done something more gross. than like five people and it's horrid. I get annoyed having six people in my party, which is the current maximum, isn't it? Or do they so. up it to... I don't know. I normally play with you and maybe Cass. I mean, I must admit, I don't use the the, the like the PlayStation party chat that often anymore. I'm, I mostly run in Discord, even if we're all playing PlayStation games. Mm. So Discord integration would be way cooler than this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, all right, Ryan. Oh, and also, Let's... most people have shitty taste in music, so I don't want to... I don't really care. I get a, I get enough people blasting their shitty music in my COD pregame <laughs> lobbies. I don't need them to share it. In yeah, I, I don't know exactly who the artist is that I don't like. All right, Ryan, let's talk some EA and their microtransaction blunders. All right. So after placing in-game ads inside UFC 4, EA is back in the news for another questionable advertising tactic. Uh, found in a Smith's toy magazine targeted for children is a FIFA 21 ad showing off the steps to customize your club. It's a really simple four-step plan, Ryan. Step one, play FIFA. Step two, use your FIFA points, their premium currency, to open packs. Step three, build your dream team. Step four, play the game. Step five, profit. <laughs> yeah, step five, EA profits. Uh, in response to the... 
controversy which started a few days ago after EA was spotted advertising FIFA points to kids inside the Smith's Toy magazine, the publisher issued the following statement. Quote, We take very seriously the responsibilities we have when marketing EA games and experiences in channels seen by children. In spite of this, we are aware that advertising for FIFA points has appeared in environments it shouldn't have. We have been working diligently with Smith's to ensure this advertisement is not distributed in any remaining copies of their 2020 catalogue. We have also undertaken an immediate review of all future media placements and are working to ensure each of our marketing efforts better reflects the responsibility we take for the experience of our younger players. But why? This is the this is just like Fortnite marketing V Bucks. What is the difference? I don't think Fortnite market their V Bucks in children's toys catalogs and Are tell them sure? to buy. I'm pretty confident I mean, they I, do. I mean, as as I must admit, I'm not an avid reader of children's magazines. That's true, me either. Or cho- children's toys catalogs, but this seems pretty gross. Yeah, well, as far like if you go to like EB Games or something, and they 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 had previously they when they were having like bundled bundle deals for V Bucks, mm. they would have Fortnite and then buy your buy V Bucks stuff here. So like they're clearly advertising, you know, for V Bucks. Like why? But I've never you know, I never really see uh, advertisements for Ultimate Team points, right? So how? But they suddenly decide to do it, and it's a problem compared to Fortnite. Is it because people like Fortnite more? I don't get it. I don't know. I think it's different to seeing a video game advertise its currency in a video game store compared to seeing a company advertise their premium currency in a... I think the main issue is that it's t- it's specifically targeted children in something that they would read. Yeah, well, I, I'm... I- I'm like pretty I get I, would have I get I emails all the time. But- I mean, I get I get emails all the time from from Epic saying, "Hey, we've got a new V Buck pack. If you buy this, you'll get skins and V Bucks." Yeah. So if you have an Epic account, which many of these kids would do, they would mm. be receiving targeted emails about V Bucks, presumably. Mm. Presumably. Is that the same thing? Yes, it is. People are people yeah. are dumb. All right, <laughs> moving on. CD Projekt Red getting crunchy. <laughs> Earlier this yourself? week, it was yeah. released that C- oh, I'm giving you, yeah, no, I'm you, giving you Zambies. Um, ah, cool. Earlier this week, it was released that CDPR has entered its final push before launch. After sending off for certification on the PlayStation and the Xbox, CD Projekt Red have kicked it up a notch as uh, to squash as many bugs before the launch on the 19th of November. Unfortunately, that means crunch. Uh, they, are, they have since moved to a six-day work week after heading into launch. The main issue around Crunch this time, however, is the CDPR last year stated in an interview with Jason Schreier that uh, co- that sorry that the company was a quote non-obligatory Crunch policy, and that was according to the the CDPR co-founder Marcin Erwinski. Uh, there are times when extra hours are needed, but Erwinski made it pretty clear that the Crunch would not be forced. Uh, quote, we want to be more humane and treat people with respect, Iwanski told Kotaku. If they need to take time off, they can take time off. Nobody will be frowned upon if this will if this uh, was requested. If this will be requested, sorry. A month later, in another interview with Kotaku, Iwinski again promised that employees working on Cyberpunk would not be required to work overtime, quote, no matter what, end quote. Bloomberg obtained an email from Cyberpunk game director and studio head Adam Badowski. In it, Badowski claimed that due to the bugs and glitches that are still in the game, which is a concern in itself, the company has no choice but to shift into, quote, overdrive. Adam took to Twitter posting, quote, The last six weeks are our final sprint on a project we've, spe- we've all spent much of our lives on. Something we care for deeply. The majority of the team understands that push, especially in the light of the facet we've just sent the game to cert, and every day brings us uh, visibly closer to shipping a game we want to be proud of. This is one of the hardest decisions I've had to make, but everyone is well compensated for for every extra hour they put in. And, like in recent years, 10% of the annual profit of the company generates in 2020 will be split directly among the team now max you're probably the most hype on the cyberpunk you're sitting in a fucking cyberpunk chair for christ's sake (laughs) yeah what are your thoughts look crunch sucks uh but i guess it seems to be inevitable like so obviously uh this 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 main the main point of this article came from jason schreier who's very much 
I don't know what it is. I've I've come to the opinion that he seems so shocked every time that he he finds out about Crunch. But it's it Crunch unfortunately is a part of a lot of things, not just the games industry. Uh, crunch happens in a lot of places. Yes, it sucks. I mean, these guys uh, at CDPR, uh, especially, are a lot more lucky than that in a lot of Western development companies because, due to their country's laws, they do actually get paid overtime. They are going to be mm-hmm. financially compensated for their time, uh, as the as uh, Badowski also explained. You know, their their company does profit shares with their development team. So I would imagine this is going to be pretty lucrative for them. Now, I understand that there are much more downsides to to crunch than just the extra hours of work. Obviously, there's a big strain on, can be put on their, both their mental health, their physical health, uh, relationships with their families will be strenu- uh, can be strenuated due to the extra work time. Uh, I wonder how many extra hours they're actually doing on that sixth day. Are they are they coming in for a full? Are they you know are they doing nine hour work days every day for six days? Are they doing twelve hour days for six days? Because that's pretty gross. Regardless that, of how big, fi- that's the big regardless of there, regardless of how, how financially uh, compensated they are, they're still going to come out of this a little bit. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, drained, I guess. Mm. Now, this game has been pushed back three times. This is a game that was supposed to originally come out in April. It got pushed back to September, and then it's been pushed again till November. Now, I understand that, you know, as a company, as a business, they need to make money. They need to make their goals. They need to, they need to get their product out into the hands of people. They need to start making revenue on that. And it sucks that it's come down to the last six weeks and they're like, we still need, uh, despite the fact that it's now certified for uh, certified for release, we kind of need to make that date. And this is what we have to do to get it there, to make sure we sh- can ship the best possible version of this game. Now, am I super hyped for this game? Yes. Will I be disappointed if it got pushed again? Yeah, a little bit. Do I understand? Will I understand if they do? Yes. Mm. Because... My enjoyment does not outweigh the health of all these developers who now have to work themselves crazy to get this out. Yeah. Like it it's a hard line to to walk, I guess. I can't imagine like like you said, I can't imagine it was an easy decision because you're responsible for so many people now having to work so many extra hours, missing out on all the things that they're going to miss out on. Mm. It it's yeah. And like Cass says in the chat, you know, they want to make the game perfect, but nothing ever releases without bugs. Yeah. There is going to be something that they find afterwards. They just want to get as much of it done as possible. Yeah. So I haven't, I, I'm aware that my take on this is probably a little <laughs> bit interesting. Um, first of all, I have a, like, I, over the recent year or so, my stance toward Jason Schreier has changed completely. I used to, <laughs> for me, he was someone of respect. He was someone that had earned a good place in gaming. And I'm like, fuck yeah, when he says something, I'm listening. Where mm. recently I've shifted. I All I'm seeing from him is him pushing this very specific agenda. Previously, he was the one guy in the game's press that would tell you, the facts here it is this is some leaks that i have this is some knowledge some information that i have he wouldn't spin like from my memory he wouldn't spin it now he has become like every other gaming outlet in terms of here's the story but through my perspective but through my beliefs now granted his beliefs on uh unionizing not a bad thing unions are fucking rad his, you know, his his beliefs on crunch. Crunch sucks. I completely agree. However, that being such a mad, a large motivator within his content or within what he writes is 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 an issue for me personally. Because as you said, he seems to be surprised that every time this happens. Now, what I like, if if he is genuinely surprised, he's intentionally being blind and ignorant. 
this is mm. a, like this is a creative space a creative space is ne- does never never really hits deadlines as a creative individual you you will you never you're not like i'm if I, i'm gonna get it done three weeks before the date no you are working until the very last second because some a, a, a creative piece is never finished it's just released at a time like i guarantee you, every game ever given the opportunity those developers would go back and add more to it because they weren't happy with it there is always something mm. that you're not happy about in a creative space now on top of that you're so you're telling me that jason try has never crunched ever to get a piece out to get his book out there so uh, it's similar to your point at the start crunch is something that's not universal to gaming it's universal to all of work in every job i've ever worked at i've crunched for my time at mcdonald's you know every time you make an order you've got to get it done in three minutes that's crunch realistically like these are 14 to 16 17 year old children being put put under emotional and mental strain because some fucking mom wants cheeseburger (laughs) right so the reward for that job in no way compares you are not getting 10 percent of the fucking share of mcdonald's profits you are just being fucking verbally and mentally beaten here now everyone within this like this this is the probably where it gets a bit more controversial but for these people they they're working at cd project red one of the most currently prestigious development studios in the entire gaming space these people could literally piss on your grandmother and you're like i really like where you're going with this i'm very excited (laughs) to see how this finishes you know what i mean and like that's where they're at so regardless of how this game comes out they are going to have that level of prestige on their resume on their information they're going to come out fucking wealthy and of course once again creative space you are going like because you want that because you you believe in that presumably you know that's the idea right you work on a project you support then you believe in the project they themselves will what will go hard in that in that back end right yeah like my job right now i care about my job i love my job i i have never worked the exact amount of hours that i'm supposed to is that bad yeah it fucking is but that's what happens when you care like when i was at mcdonald's did i do overtime no because fucking mcdonald's (laughs) as my camera freezes again you know what i mean it's like I'm not, I'm, I am not going to work overtime to fucking clean a vat because I care about the result of that vat. No, that job sucked asshole. And I'm don't think about it. I didn't work overtime when I worked in a call center for energy Australia. Cause you know what? That job sucked too. And I, that's, uh, I know that's like a really horrible way to look at it. And that's looking at through one, my personal experiences compared to the entire experiences of of that workplace but from what it sounds like and what we've been told the culture at cd project red is different it's supportive it's nice they've gone you will be paid for every minute that you are here yeah if you do overtime for this six day even though it's mandatory this mandatory six day in order to meet the deadline you will be paid you know as you said in the western market they're like you are doing this unpaid even even as another example eb games australia i remember hearing about articles and pieces about people like casuals and managers that are forced to do unpaid overtime that's crunch because the company's like we're only going to pay for this much however our expectations of you are this yeah and on top of that as well, once again, the whole idea of the creative endeavor, it's intent, something is never truly finished. My point is, yeah, cool. Last year, they made the call that there was going to be no crunch. Now, granted, the pandemic probably played a pretty big role in that too. But even then, he was like, like what, who would have thought? He, I, I, when I read that last year, I guarantee I went, no, nah, it's not happening. You know what I mean? Like, I understand we need to take his word for it because he's got people's livelihoods on the line, but that's unrealistic. Yeah. And on top of that, I am concerned as fuck for Cyberpunk. If they're six weeks out and they're not like, hey, we're just wrapping up the last couple of things, they're like, oh no, we gotta go fucking ham. 
This game, as you said, this game, this is on its third delay. And they still haven't fixed it? Either this game is so ambitiously large, it's going to be a detriment to the game itself, or it's all kinds of fucked. But it will still sell well. That 10% will still be amazing. They'll have that resume <laughs> of working on fucking cyberpunk. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's, that's my thing, right? Like, you know, we're six weeks out and you're still having to go this ham. If the game was on track, then this wouldn't be a problem. If they'd hit their milestones, this wouldn't be a problem. They delayed this game prior to a pandemic. So that's already concern number one. And then they've, con- they've had to continue it. Now, they're in a hard place. I guarantee you, they if they could, they would push it again. And they'd push yeah. it again. And they'd probably push it again. Because as I said, they're feeling that pressure of, of quote-unquote perfection. What, the, the Witcher 3 is one of the most well-received games of this generation. For many people, it's likely the game of the generation. That is a lot of pressure to, for the following game, right? So I understand yeah. that there's, there's a lot there. Did it, does it get delayed again? No, it is not getting delayed again. But the reason being is it's already pushed into the next gen. That's dangerous. Yeah, it's not only is it coming out after next gen consoles, but it's not, not on next gen consoles. Next gen yes. consoles. Yeah. So on top of that, presumably they're going to have to crunch to get it to hit the PS5, like in order to make that because once it's released after the launch of PS5, very few people are going to give a shit about PS4. City many many PR. people will, but th- if they want that done in a quick turnaround time, they're probably going to have to work hard to get the PS5. City City PR are going to be so busy over the next few months, so they they're crunching now for the next six weeks before launch, and then they've also said that they're re- they're releasing a a Witcher three upgrade for PS5. And the Cyberpunk upgrade for PS5 both coming next year. They're going to be busy. Now, Max, has anything I said been unreasonable? I because like it, because like my no, opinions really. are so opposite of what the 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 masses are on, especially on, probably within my my bubble on Twitter as an example. I feel that I'm like wrong, but I feel that I'm at least on a logical track, right? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I covered, I covered a lot of, like, uh, crunch happens everywhere, crunch always sucks, and even if you are well compensated for that crunch, there is still residual effects from that crunch. Of course. So, but unfortunately, like, a lot of these people should have known when they got into this creative industry that they would be working to deadlines, and if they did not meet those deadlines, they would have to work harder to meet those deadlines. Like, it's... you know, like, it sucks, but it, it, it is what it is. Yeah, and it, w- once again, I think this is a fault of the creative industry. Like, uh, this I, is not a fault do, of CDPR directly. This is not something that can be fixed because it's something that cannot be fixed because the creative drive is does not work from nine to five. The creative, fo- the creative drive will not stop at November 14th. Yeah. Let's move it on. Uh, this is what the developers at CDPR are going to turn into once Cyberpunk has been released. <laughs> Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> so Thursday morning, we got our first look at the upcoming Call of Duty titles Zombies Mode. In an eight minute long video, we get to see some gameplay and some new, addi- uh, some new additions to uh, these, the Zombies gameplay, as well as some developer commentary. I can't believe I wrote additions instead of additions. Moron. Uh, the team describes how they're overhauling the complete experience with free post-launch content, big bonus, a brand new story and progression, and both loadouts that tie into every mode available. Quote, Black Ops Cold War sets the stage for a new zombies experience that not only celebrates our entire zombies heritage, but uses it as, uh, uses, it, uses it as an inspiration to build a completely new chapter in our universe. Uh, there was also an advertisement at the end of their uh, eight minute video to, sh- uh, to promote their open beta coming a little bit later this month uh, with early access for those who digitally pre-order on the PlayStation. Man, so I'm a huge zombies fan since... It came in at World at War. Uh, the, the some of the new additions that they brought in, it looks like you're getting kill streaks now, 
Uh, they are not set characters as there have been in the past. You get to play as the operators from multiplayer. Uh, playing zombies mode will now uh, uh, progress your battle pass if you're a battle pass owner in the new Call of Duty. So you don't have to just play your war zones or your multiplayer. You can you can play zombies if you're a zombies player and still benefit from all those additions. Uh, there's no longer the I'm going to start with this pistol and I buy all my weapons off the wall. You can you can come in with a custom loadout and still buy the weapons from the wall. They're all really good additions. Uh, some of those happen in the last call uh, in the last Black Ops version. You could you could kind of modify your weapons so when you purchase them they'd be a little bit more expensive, but you, you would get all the benefits of like your quick mags, your extended mags, all that stuff. Uh, they've brought back some of the new classic soda pops, so you've still got your your Juggernog, your Speed Cola. Uh, we got uh, hints at a new one called Elemental Pop, which sounds intriguing. Uh, they announced the new map uh, titled uh, uh, De Machina, and it's a reworked Nacht de Untoten from the original. So it's got this whole new completely reworked underground lair underneath the mansion which looked cool lots of vibrant graffiti color uh coloring paintings all over the walls oh i i haven't been this excited for a call of duty game in a very long time uh they they talked about that that, that zombies mode never really had a finished state you would keep playing until you died Unless there was a finish state in the in the overarching Easter egg of the story, uh, they've they've now introduced uh, what they're calling like an exfil. So you can you can call a chopper in to to leave. So you can you can leave with all the accumulated uh, experience points that you've got. They said, however, it's not an instantaneous thing. For the next few rounds, we're going to amp up all the zombies that are coming in, and you have to survive. That's mad. And then then we'll get you out. <laughs> That's mad. So there's this this uh, this kind of risk reward of how long do I stay in? Am I getting over this? Uh, they also it also sounded like there was going to be a drop in drop uh, drop in drop out system because obviously zombie rounds can be quite long and sometimes you need to go and do something and want to come back. Uh, back in back in the olden days with my group of friends, what we would do is we would leave one zombie alive and he'd run around in front of the zombie while everyone went and took a toilet break for. Got a cup of coffee. This one guy just be running around in a circle, making sure no one died. So it'll be it'll be nice if that if that is a thing. But the addition of their them coming out and saying all of our post launch content, so all the brand new zombies maps are going to be free, really really good. Mm. Especially since in in the past games where they had that overarching story that went through all the levels, it's nice that you, it's nice to know you're going to be able to get the full story without having to buy extra content every step of the way. All right, that, that's that's my rant on <laughs> how super keen I am for zombies, and I think this is going to be my number one purchase on launch day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, I, purely for purely for this, but I think I don't, I'm I'm even going to touch multiplayer. See, I just want to play zombies. My excitement is does not match you at all, <laughs> because the thing is, I've always been garbage at zombies, be, because I be, without it there being an end game. I find it difficult to progress. They're like, yeah. as in, I understand it's like, open the door and go over here. I'm like, yeah, but why? Mm. Like, I spend so much of my time in, in zombies asking why. It's like, yeah, I upgrade, yep. the, I upgrade the bigger weapon so I can take out more waves. But now that there is an end point, you know, so you get everything done within the level that you need to, then you get extracted. I'm like, mad. That's awesome. Or for some mm. reason, I, I'm unable to hit all the tasks. Oh shit. All right. I'm just going to get extracted. Mm. that is awesome that is that might be enough to for me to 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 change my tone uh on how what i think about the zombies um the loadouts is cool the being able to be whoever you want is nice because remember the one of the big things is the different um the the different uh characters that you played like when they were played by you know like fucking heather graham and shit um they had different skills and you're like, Oh, I don't fucking like playing. So the grandma would be Jeff Goldblum. Like, ha, ah, I already picked Jeff Goldblum. So like, oh. you know, like, so you're instantly shut out because you're not the exact person you want to be. Where here, mm. you can kind of create your own character. And then as you said, like you and your friends can really plan around how you're going to do this run. Um, or oh, a drop in, drop out is amazing too. Cause you know, I'll get five rounds in. I'm like, I'm bored of this, but I, I don't want to stop my run. Um, it sounds like they're doing a lot of solid impre uh, improvements here, um, which is which is 
great for yourself. Like I, when I, I, I know a number of my clients are really, really excited because they, they, they. I wonder love if zombies. this. Sorry to interrupt. I'm I wonder sorry. if this addition is because they haven't needed to work on the campaign mode, because that's obviously been handled by Raven. Yeah. Raven? So yep. So well, that's, that's so, certainly very so, true. So, Treyarch, so, Treyarch, may have so taken Treyarch have literally. Yeah, Treyarch have literally just have to work on the multiplayer and the zombies. And let's face it, at this point, the COD multiplayer is kind of a copy-paste these mm-hmm. days. It's very similar to the rest of them. Not much ever really gets changed. Because even on top of so, that, Warzone is is supported by a different a team now. Yeah. So Warzone was created for Black Ops 4. And when what was it? Oh, shit, what, Blackout, it was called then. Then it became mm. Warzone. Like that was supported by Treyarch. Treyarch have since hand, handed that over to a different in, in different internal team. I can't remember who it is though. Um, so that's no longer on their cards. Yeah, there's no campaign. Raven are doing it, so they've been allowed to. But they've been uh, they've had the, the freedom to be able to put as much as they want in as zombies, and mm. because zombies only tend to come in the Treyarch ones, right? They don't appear in yeah. the others. So so, so the bad. the modern warfare titles generally have a. Uh, there is generally a wave shooter, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's it's you you shoot normal people, not zombies. Wow. I mean, it's it's essentially similar, very similar, but yeah. Either way, yeah, I'm glad that I'm, I'm glad that you're excited, and that's what. Counts. Like I said, I'm I'm actually more excited for this COD than I have been in a very long time. All right, guess what? Because the amount of news, I get to do the quick bits today. <laughs> quick bits. Uh, quick PS bits. Plus games for October have been announced. They are Vampire. That's uh, their uh, B re- B title. Apparently, it's pretty good though. And need yeah, for really speed good payback. Uh, it's a bit of a disappointing month, especially heading into the next gen. But that makes sense. Um, disappointing for me because I own both the games already. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's just Vam- <laughs> Vampire always caught my interest. Friend of the show, Jess, really the rocker good. mummy, loved it. Um, and I ta- I take her opinion very seriously. So I I, was I, I I bought it after watching her play it. Yeah, mad. There you go. Look at you, you big influencer, Je- uh, Jess. Uh, Nifty Payback, don't care. Remember the trailer looked like Fast and the Furious, and that's about the only thing I remember. Uh, Pathless has since been confirmed as a PS5 launch title. Mm -hmm. That is that uh, uh, Endless Runner with the bows and arrows. Cool. Nice little indie game on launch. That's awesome. Uh, There was speculation it was going to be the first PlayStation Plus title for the PS5, uh, but it has been confirmed that it's a launch title now. Yeah, still could be. Uh, True. Fall Guys Season 2... will be more generous with its crowns uh, now because previously crowns were only behind uh, winning a match uh, and but there was still a currency within the store so I, I don't know how they're being more generous did they mention I think how? I think I, th- I think it said that there's uh, going to be a similar to what a battle pass is that you can get crowns by doing certain things All right. So they won't just be tied behind wins because obviously all the premium cosmetics are tied behind crowns. So if you never, ever get a win, you can never, ever get some costumes. Which, which is a bit shit, but it's also it rewards skill. Mm. But the, the, the other problem with Fall Guys, it's not always about skill. It's a game that's kind of designed for you to still win and not have skill. I mean, as someone who's run into the glitch where I've grabbed the crown at the end and still lost, like that's really frustrating. <laughs> uh, there is currently, uh, oh, hang on. So the Reverend Pucks, you can get some crowns as you level, but it's not very generous. Okay. Yeah. So they'll, they'll increase those. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, there is a current sale on the PSN for games of a generation. So what they believe to be all some of the big fucking games you want to play out on mm. the PS4 are available there. Uh, PlayStation and Funko are collaborating once again, uh, with some death stranding and, uh, horizon zero dawn. As I showed last week, uh, they are behind me here. I have the uh, Last of Us Part 2 pops. I hate pop vinyls, except for the ones that I like. Um, I know that's very vague. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I really want that Higgs pop. That Higgs one's mad. I really want that Higgs pop. Yeah, that looks so good. So good. And so, they, yeah, so got a big they're, super-sized... They're... Uh, 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 Thunderjaw. Thunderjaw. I'm going to say Razor Tooth for something else. Um, and yeah. uh, it's the two brothers from God of War. Uh, what, uh, they're, they're the, um, the blacksmith guys. Oh, oh, Sin- I think it's uh, them. Sindri and that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's them. Yeah. Cause I think like, more, like Modi, like, you know, like the, yeah. the, the, the nephews of Thor, uh, the nephews mm. of Odin, uh, Odin, but no, mm. uh, Neil Druckmann has visited the uncharted, uncharted movie set with, uh, Tom Holland. Apparently it's hot mess. 
<laughs> uh, and this and this one's a bit 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 bit, 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 bit for Max. Final Fantasy 16 teaser website is set to go live this month. Are you getting all like uh, you know uh, excited the more and more you hear about Final Fantasy 16? Yes and no. Why? I'm super exci- I'm super excited that there's another numbered sequel. I'm also cynical that Square Enix are doing what Square Enix does and they're announcing it way too early and I'm going to have to wait six years for it anyway. Yeah, probably. So. Although from what I've heard, a lot of it is they're like, everyone's like, sooner than you think. We've been working on it for five years. Like, have you though? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like you worked on Final Fantasy 13 for eight. Like, come on. <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> yeah. As much as I love Final Fantasy games, literally have them tattooed on my arm, I am still skeptical. <laughs> and finally, the top 10 selling PS games here in Australia for the week ending the 27th of September. Number 10, Red Dead Redemption 2. Number 9, Ghost of Tsushima. Number 8, Grand Theft Auto 5. Number 7, Marvel's Spider-Man. Uh, number 6, The Division 2. Number five, Mafia Definitive Edition. Number four, Marvel's Avengers. That's still doing incredibly well. Uh, Number three, NBA 2K21. Number two, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. And of course, taking out the win this week at number one is the Mafia Trilogy. So that comes with Mafia Definitive Edition, Mafia 2 Definitive Edition, and Mafia 3 Definitive Edition. Apparently, the, you know, I remember last week, I'm like, why is Madden not in there? Apparently, Madden's fucking hot shit right now. Yeah. Like it's, it's, Which is it's, a real it's shame. Well. It's not yeah. doing well at all. Uh, Puck in the chat, Square and Kingdom Hearts 3 for almost 15 years in three different console genres. See, Puck's right. Yep. He's on the right level of suspicion right now. He's that right oh, level yeah, of suspicion. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I'm a huge Square fan. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm shameless in that. And even I'm like, yeah, yeah, you, 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 I'm like, I'm like, Dang. you announce, you announce stuff too early. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> but that's can't it. you all just, can't you all do the Fallout Four stuff where you announce it and then three months later it's out? That was so mad. That's what I want. That's what I want. Just do that. Well, look, it's like prepare yourself. It's coming. Yeah, but Sony's months. doing that right now with the PS Five. Everyone's like, whoa, fucking back up. <laughs> They're like, this is what you wanted. Anyway, that yeah. brings us to the end of the show. What a good show this week. I was feeling it. I got a little ranty in there, an informative ranty. You got to be excited for, you know, very rarely <laughs> you get to actually be excited. You got to be excited about Call of Duty. There was some PS5 news in there. It's a really, it's a, it's a super weird feeling being excited for a Call of Duty game. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's a weird feeling. And like, as I said, like I sat here and poo-pooed on um, CD Projekt Red and Cyberpunk. I'm worried. Like I'm also, ex- I'm, I'm still very open for it to be good. You know, I was talking to Bandai this week. God, I hope. God, I hope it's good. <laughs> yeah, you better hope it's good. You bought, you bought merchandise. You never buy merch before it releases. Um, well, unless you're, unless you're an Xbox owner. Yeah. In which case, you got your Cyberpunk console six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, rough. Six months ago, right before the next gen. Crazy time. Rough, rough. Oh, so yeah. So with Xbox Series X is out in the wild, Max. Maybe we'll see uh, some PS5s out in the wild over the coming week. Yeah, I hope so. I hope to, hopefully, there was some, there was a Reddit post earlier, I didn't put it in the news, there was a Reddit post earlier with some apparent leaked footage of the, uh, the user select screen of a PlayStation 5, it, it showed a picture of a PlayStation 5 with the side panels taken off, Ooh. I'm assuming they're quite easily to remove to put a new hard drive in it, because they're, they're saying we're going to give you a list of hard drives that yeah, are supported. Yeah, where is that list? Boom. And then they also, there was a black DualSense controller in the guy's hand. Go. Cool. What now? <laughs> but it's on Reddit. They've already been taken down, so take that all with a grain of salt. Yeah. Well, if, if you can, if you can, if you can pull the panels off the side, I presume that means they can be three D printed. Which I mean, which I, I presume means I can make multiple. Which also means I can have multiple colors. Or you cool. can buy them separately because I want, like, you know. I said I don't want to like fuck with the white. I mean, one. You, I mean, you can take the face plate off, the, like the top plate off a of PlayStation Four to get into the. My hardware. PlayStation's fucking purple and got an axe in it. Like I can do it with whatever I want, but that's a very permanent decision that I made. <laughs> like, if I can take the panels off, make other ones, and put them back on, then that's a win for me. <sighs> oh, actually, we have one more bit of news that I totally forgot about. Oh yeah, Ubisoft. Here. 
Yes. Yeah, so, so about half an hour ago, uh, right before we started recording, uh, IGN came out with an article titled Ubisoft CEO explains how the company is aiming to change to prevent a- abuse. So after their internal um, internal investigation over all the things that have been happening in the past that have come to come to light, uh, following the audit, Ubisoft has identified quote four closely related areas in which we need to improve on quickly. Number one, we need to guarantee a working environment where everyone feels respected and safe. Probably should have already had that. That seems glad that glad they came very, to that. I'm glad they only worked that out now. <laughs> Uh, number two, putting diversity and inclusion at the heart of everything that we do. Number three, we will be refocusing and strengthening our HR function. Good. Yes, yeah. very good. And number four, we need to make the managers of the group accountable and empower them. Don't empower the managers. The managers have had too much power. That's the being the problem. So according to the Ubisoft internal investigation, roughly 25% of employees, quote, have experienced or witnessed some form of workplace misconduct in the past two years, and that one in five do not feel fully respected or safe in the work environment. That sounds like a horrible place to work. You talking about CDPR's crunch? Fuck me. Ubisoft, please. So do my cyberpunk's crunch, Jesus. <laughs> But that's it. That's the, yeah. Yeah. It's all right. Anyway, let's wrap up this show, Max. We're, we're done and dusted. So this PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning on play on PlayStation services. Let's start that again. One day. One day. See, One day. Five. That's the dream. <laughs> this PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Spotify and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you'd like to be part of future conversations, please check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, Twitter, all the links in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash the pop cultures where you can watch us record this show live. We can become part of the chat and join in on the show. Another way you can support us is you can tell your friends, you can tell your family about this PlayStation podcast. Uh, you can, uh, if you listen to us on podcast services like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. Or if you're watching us on the YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. I endeavor to answer every comment that pops up. Uh, you want to support us financially at patreon.com slash the pop culturist, as well as our merchandise store, popculturist.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. But until next week, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And that was for the players. My kids at my window just knocking up a storm. For the players, the Pop Culturist PlayStation Podcast is fan supported at patreon.com slash the pop culturist. And we'd like to thank our Patreon producers and our Patreon founders for their kindness, their support, and their generosity. Our Patreon founders, Alpha Ferret, Craig O'Flaherty, David Chataway, Jesse Stevenson, and Jacob Garner. And our Patreon producers, Damien Holdies, Lee Winterchauvin, Sean Levitt, and Solomon Barak.